Hi friends, my name's host Eric. I'm the host of Talking with Famous People, and tonight I'm going to talk about something I just found out about. Apparently, from what I hear, there are, you know how like everybody's kind of different, but it's like some people are more kind of the same than other people? Well, apparently there are these things called personality types, and there are 16 of them. Uh, I've been trying to figure out which one I am. I think I may be like three or four different ones combined. From what I can tell. Uh, I am like probably like INTP plus NTP plus ESTP plus INTJ plus NTJ plus INFJ, I think, mostly. Um, I just wanted to share with you this great idea that I heard about that maybe some people are like one another because they're the same personality type. I have a message from Jeffrey's mom. Jeffrey doesn't like what he wrote, and he's going to write another one in about an hour. Could you please tell Mr. Strauss to wait for the new one? New version? What? <laughs> okay. I already did the old version. You can tell I already fixed the other one. Um, yeah, 16 personality types. It's a lot. You're right about that. But we got to be real, real careful when we're doing our type descriptions. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the INTJ personality type. They're your dorks. Okay, your big dorks. They like science. They like math. They're um, starers. They're starers. They like to stare at people. They're constantly staring at everyone all the time. Now let's talk about your INTPs. They're your nerds. Your dorky nerds. Your nerdy jorks. You know? They like to, you know, bury their face in their computer screen all day long. Yes. And talk about things that don't matter. Cheap talk. <laughs> you know? And two tards, as we like to call them. Uh, Roll up to the S. SATs late, leave SATs early. Right. So let's talk about your ENTPs. Talk, talk, talk. Bunch of pussies. They're nothing but talk. They got no chalk in their dock, if you know what I mean. Now, this is how it goes, all right? God level, ESTP. You know, elite level, ISTP, ESFP. You know, like medium level, like ISFJ, ISTJ, ESTJ, and two guitars, bottom level, all the ends. Fuck all y'all. Sensors rising up, taking over. Is there a particular personality type that tends to have Tourette's more than any other? No. There isn't. If you got Tourette's, I got the bets. You got the what? <laughs> I got the cut. That's what they say. I looked up dork and apparently it's slang for penis. I'll tell you what's slang for penis. Hand bone. Dong. Listen, I want to tell you a story. My smoking hot girlfriend and I were having pizza like a couple of regular Americans earlier. We, we saw this in Tudor trying to come inside the pizza restaurant. He opened the door. He tried to open the door three times before the third time he finally got it. First, he tried to push it one spot wrong. It says pull in Tudor. It says pull. Um. <laughs> A man's penis does seem like an unnecessary redundancy. <laughs> I agree with you, Hambone, there. That seems redundant. A woman's penis is not a dork. A woman's penis is a nerd. Everybody knows that. And two tards. It's like, okay, first of all, it says pull. So pushing that side of the door is not going to open it, and pushing that side of the door is also not going to open it into a tard? Yeah, right there, pull. Okay. It 
it's a whale penis. I've heard that so many times from so many different women. Oh, I mean, I'm sorry. Um, okay. So, what's the difference between a sensor and an intuitard? Number one, intuitards always knock shit over. Number two, intuitards can't even get through a door. Number three, intuitards are no good with chicks. Number four, intuitards suck at sports. Number five, intuitards talk too much. Is my girlfriend at ESFP today? No. 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 She's an INFJ. I know, she's an intuitard, but it's okay. She's my dual. Right, sweetie? Yeah. See? She's so agreeable. <laughs> <laughs> it's me, Rick Benson. Oh, look. Hooray, hooray. Here comes another intuitard with her yammer, yammer, talk, talk. Winston's mom, good evening. How are you and the intuitards? And a two-tard is anybody with an N in their 16 personality types, okay? It's like half of them, but it's like only like 10% of the most lame people, okay? So, it's like, let's say you and your bros and everybody's heads are all going down to the river to jet ski. All right, let's say you are. What is an two-tard going to do? Not want to go. They're not going to want to go. Why not? Because they're into a target. That's why. Wait, where are we supposed to go? To the river to jet ski. You, my bros, everybody's hoes, some beers. One time I did that, and I think maybe the center that I was on the jet ski with was going 70 miles per hour, and I almost threw up. I know that's not impressive to you. I uh, no. That's not impressive. <laughs> That's why. Yeah, well, you know, only two kinds of people go to the river. Bros and hoes. All right? So, when you go to the river, be a good hoe. Aaron ENTP, you have it in your type. Who's Aaron ENTP? I am not going jet skiing on the river, which name sticks. No, you go on the Colorado River. Duh. God. You go down to the river, like to the Laughlin or something. Everybody gets drunk. You know. What happens at the river stays at the river. Let's just say there's a lot of topless chicks. Right. Yeah. All right. So, now that we've got plans for the weekend set up, now look, we're not just going to the river to jet ski because I'm also bringing the dirt bikes. We're going to do a little dirt biking, all right? So I'm going to catch some wicked air while I'm dirt biking today. I'm also consider considering doing some jet biking, some jet dirting, and some bike skiing. You're so active, babe. I'm so active. All right? Yeah. So, anyhow, enough <laughs> being S.E. I can't, I just can't sustain the S.E. bro for very long. We could make me depressed, frankly. Is it? <laughs> it starts making me a little depressed. Why? Because I don't like to picture all these people playing beer bong and taking um, the ladies upstairs, you know? Yeah, it does happen. And like, high five, bro. Oh, no. But what if she's an ESFP? Well, she's totally down with right. that. Yeah. There's certain combos, it's just like, do it. but it's good to have the ENT be back. Yeah, it's good yeah. to be back. My cat has four legs and a tail. What does that say about his MBTI type? 
Mm, INTP. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. So if anybody has any questions, thoughts, comments, queries, concerns, complaints about cognitive functions, I'd be happy to answer them. I'm your cognitive function answer man. I'm your 16 personalities type description man as well. I'm going to give you a type description. Uh, you know, let's see. Big, bad, bold, and beautiful. What, what type is that? ENTJ? <laughs> I don't know. I just it just seemed like something that a, a a large woman on a dating site might have in their profile. She did. Excellent. This clears up a lot. Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome, Steely Bob. Drinking alcohol, generally speaking, bad idea. As I have realized things about SI because of some of the things you have said. SI is not just remember tradition and rules to lead by. It. No, it's not. It's experiential knowing. It's knowing the way of your experience by weighing your experience against other experience in an experience weighing contest. Eric, you said yesterday INFP is a physical type. No, FI is a physical function. FI, SI, SE, TE, they're physical functions. T I F E N E N I, those are metaphysical functions. INFP is a physical type. ENTJ is a physical type. Um, ISFP, physical type. ISTJ, physical type. Why lol? Why are you lolling? Nobody asked you to lol, okay? At best, they ask you to all quietly to yourself. Do drink often? Do drink often. <laughs> is that a command, Cambone? <laughs> That's like a is not a metaphysical way. function. No. No, 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 no. You have to think about it like this. One of them is experiential. One of them is representational. FI is the experience of feelings. So, for example, if my dog dies, I might rationally say, well, you know, you can get another dog, whatever. Who cares? You don't need that dog. If anything, it was probably a bit of an imposition on you. It required you to feed it and yada, yada, yada. Um, But it doesn't matter because you experience the loss on a physical level. You feel the pain and mourning and sadness of the loss. It's rendering physical what you held valuable about an entity that you no longer have access to. And you might, in fact, the thing is, it's physical also because, you know, it genuinely has a physical manifestation. Like if you feel excited about something, you'll feel an adrenaline rush in your chest. If you, you know, that aspect of it too. True. That's a great way of describing it. Do you believe the world's personality can be reduced to 16 personalities? Seems more like a very rough sorting hat, yet more often than not, people can be placed in the group. Well, Sam Smith, it's a good question in the sense that you're basically asking, is this an arbitrary taxonomy or a non-arbitrary taxonomy? And the answer is, it's a non-arbitrary taxonomy. Uh, in the same sense that species uh, or families or whatever of animals are a non-arbitrary taxonomy. Uh Stop mixing the physical versus metaphysical nature of TE and FE. I'm not mixing them. What are you talking about? Just get sassy. <laughs> Joel Nathan Henry. <laughs> look, they both, they, they're, look, FE is metaphysical because it's, it does its work mostly with words and language. You can think of it that way, okay? TE is physical because it does its work mostly with realities in the world. Uh, it's not always the case, though. Th th those two functions are, or a bit of both, you know? Did YouTube make the chat skinnier? Anybody else see a difference? I don't see that. No, I don't. Um, elaborate how crazy ferret ladies differentiate with crazy cat ladies. Well, crazy ferret ladies are wise, wise uh, sources of moral wisdom. 
that come to this channel and guide me in my decision yes. making. Um, FE is an assumption while FI is an experience. Well, like, look, FI is this. This is why it's metaphysical. Rachel and I, and another reason why it's metaphysical. Rachel and I were just at the pizza restaurant. First, Rachel played INFJ, which was, which is like, boy, sure could use some napkins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever it was you said. Uh -huh. Which is her way of going like, let's see if Eric will get up and get the napkins. Oh, and then, not entirely. And then, okay. And then <laughs> I was thinking about getting up and getting them, but I was sitting there until I actually felt, of course, because why? N-I-S-I. So when did I decide to get up and get the napkins? As soon as I needed the napkins and experienced there being stuff on my hands. <laughs> Prior to that, I didn't feel like getting up and getting the napkins because I hadn't experienced feet, having stuff on my hands. <laughs> when I did experience stuff getting, having it on my hands, Rachel and I both started to get up at the same time to get the napkins. And then I sat back down and let Rachel go get the napkins. And then when she came back, I pointed out that at no point did either of us consider saying to the dude who was right there, hey, can we have some napkins? Mm -hmm. Why? Well, that's F.E. Because Rachel and I are thinking out how to manage this shit in an interface fashion <laughs> rather than attending to the fact that we want napkins. Mm -hmm. We want napkins, T.E. Ask the person who works here for some napkins. <laughs> F.E. though, well, I suspect the napkins might be in front of the counter. Assuredly, they have napkins in the back behind the counter as well, but I suspect that they might have put napkins in front of the counter for us to get. I don't know this. I don't remember seeing them there, but I suspect they're probably over there. So I'm not going to ask the guy if he can get me some napkins because I don't want him to have to walk around the counter to get the napkins, which I could get up and get myself more easily than he could, and which are put out there in front for the purpose of me getting myself so that he doesn't have to go get them. Boom. That's F.E. That's F.E. Tell me that's physical. <laughs> no. That's a bunch of ideational nonsense. Right? It's a bunch of F.E. nonsense that goes through both Rachel and I's head, but not so explicitly as all that. It's like, that's the frame, right? We don't have to think out, here's why I'm not going to ask the person. Um, <laughs> it didn't even occur to me until after. What's your favorite tattoo debate? I don't know what you mean. Um, you know, but we, the thing is, we don't usually think that shit out, but it's absolutely the case that, um, that's a lot of SE verbiage, chief. Uh huh, a lot of FE verbiage. I'm talking about going and getting stuff, I'm talking about doing stuff, not interfering with other people. <laughs> so, what function when you say is representative of intrapersonal intelligence or introspection? Okay, so intrapersonal intelligence is FI and SI, okay? Depending on the kind of FI or SI. It's not metaphysical. There is a metaphysical aspect to FI. There absolutely is, but it's the non-native aspect of FI. Just like there's a physical aspect to FE, but it's the non-native um, aspect. So when I say that FI is physical function, I mean it's native aspect of physical. I don't mean that it doesn't have a metaphysical aspect. Every function has an off aspect and an on aspect, the native aspect and the non-native aspect. FI works less, less well when you try to think of it across time, when you're using your feelings to anticipate things, how they're going to play out. Like, is this the right person to be with? Well, how strongly do I feel about them is not a very good indicator of whether or not you're going to end up in a good relationship with that person. Um, I don't think, but that's just maybe it's because no. I'm not FI. I don't know. Rachel, I would like to pull a bong rip and open up and get my sodi from over there. Uh, okay. Can you man the ship for a minute or two? Sure I'll join you in a rip when you do one as well. Oh, okay, sure. Yeah, I'll pack you. Oh, that That's packed, I believe. It's ready to go. If you okay. Want. Here's the lighter. Thank you. Lighter right here. <laughs> hey, everybody. I think that whole napkin thing, that is an example of Two intuitives at dinner, both taking a simple, very simple experience, getting napkins, 
and and having a conversation about it, which the meanings that we discuss, you know, like they had this conversation with her in the place, although in a less detailed way, right? We talked about oh, it yeah. then, right? <laughs> like that's what it means to be intuitive. It means most of the time is spent talking about <coughs> and thinking about what it means to get the napkins, and much less of the time is spent attending to actually getting the napkins. That's why that intuitive guy at the restaurant had to try three times to get into the door. Yeah. Because he's not looking in front of him at the sign. He's thinking about something in his head. Does one type handle alcohol the best? I mean, probably like ESFJs or something. ISTPs handle their alcohol, but I, they're alcohol people. I don't know if they handle it the best. But uh, I do know a lot of EST, um, not ESTP. I mean, I don't know, but ISTP. But if you're talking about who handles it without getting drinking too much and stuff, probably ESFJs are a good choice. They don't seem particularly addictive. No, they just enjoy it. Um, ESTJs. Mm -hmm. My dad drinks successfully. He had, I never seen him out of hand really. I hate alcohol. It tastes so crap. I hate alcohol too. Yeah, I'm not an alcohol fan either. Hello there. Don't tell Juliet Ferret. She will find this undignified. Was the Ferret smiling in her educable sweater? I cut a sock into a sweater for Keller Ferret and she was not amused. It's so cute. Wouldn't body function size and the likes be more important than personality may be experienced too. Well, that's what dating is about. I mean, I don't know about body functions and stuff, but when you're going through the experience, you're definitely, you know, body functions, sizes, all of that is being taken into account, whether I think it's consciously or unconscious. The thing is, Personality type is also a part of that. So you got to, there are some people I think who, you know, they meet in high school or, or, you know, in their childhood and that's who they're meant to be with. But then there's others and you got to date and I don't know. I mean, it's really a matter of personality type doesn't tell you whether you're going to have a successful relationship or not, depending on how you define successful. Um, but I can tell you this, that having the right match in terms of intuitive, intuitive, highly metaphysical, highly metaphysical means that when I'm talking about a bunch of ideas about stuff, I'm not getting shushed. Somebody who's not interested in that kind of shit because they're a censor is going to end up shushing me a fair amount. They don't want to hear more about what it means that we both got up to get napkins at the same time. <laughs> yes. I you misread just want the napkins. Exactly. They don't give a fuck right. about all these words. No, and I always try to do it the simplest way. Usually, I guess this is an intuitive part of me. Usually, I can intuit where the napkins are going to be at a restaurant, especially a pizza restaurant or a fast food place. Um... So I, I, I want to do it easy my way. And I am not a huge fan of being like, excuse me, excuse me. Anyway, they were at, they were saying about type and body size for alcohol. Oh, for alcohol. Yeah, I mean, that does absolutely take into account. Like, body size does make a difference. But it's also like body or metabolism type or whatever. Yeah. You yeah, know? metabolism. Hell yeah. I was a drunk for sure. But I was never a heavyweight. Um, which is to say, it never took that much alcohol to get me drunk. Ah, that's a that's a big deal. Me too. I felt like okay. So if I were to drink tonight, just this is like you're just saying. I'm not going to because I don't drink. But if I were to drink three beers tonight, I'd be fucking done and have a hangover the next day. It's a miserable feeling. So. My body is, has been like, you've been there, done that with alcohol. 
The Not best way to get in touch, Jake Forrest, is to text Rachel. But um, yeah, I do check my email like every couple of days. You can text. It's fine. Uh, I want to finish this. Sure. So, I mean, the thing is about alcohol in general. Alcohol is uh, an interesting drug. You know, it's like a lot of people don't ultimately end up consuming it well, even if they do it first. Uh, it's it's so it so lends itself to habituation. How would my life be different if I didn't know about type? Um, Well, that's an interesting question. <coughs> I I have I have much less of a of an interesting um an interesting frame through which to analyze stuff. I'd have less of a shared lexicon. And I wouldn't have a group of people around whom I could use that shared lexicon meaningfully. Because you know, mm -hmm. obviously, if I go out in the world, most places, and I say to some random person like. Oh hey, that's good FE. They have no no fucking idea what I'm talking about. No. Um there's an owl outside my house going mental. It might be a bit cuckoo. Would that typology with TWFP still exist? Um, yeah, it would be a different kind of community. Uh it would be more philosophy oriented and debate oriented, I guess. Probably wouldn't be as big. Uh I was making videos anyway. I, I, I was going to end up talking about shit anyway. <laughs> it's the perfect, you're saying it's a perfect platform for, you know, any. Yeah. It, regardless of typology, it is a perfect platform for any. And uh, what that means is I'm somebody who needs to talk a lot to people, not just by myself. Great. And this is a, a wonderful, you know, platform for that and i think the live stream you take advantage of it of it a lot and that's a good thing yeah and i think rachel likes it too i do um <laughs> uh it's like that, that makes me laugh the, what he says uh i hope yelled at people highlights part one this video oh my God. <gasps> that exists I need yeah. to see it. Okay, I'll see Yay, it. next. Yes, I'm okay. so excited. The, that MJ video, like, I loved that video. I thought that was where MJ, like, um, she typed police to you. Uh -huh. So funny. You were you scared me when you were yelling at the person. I'm like, oh, my gosh, she really is scary when he yells at people. Why is she yelling at who? Earlier today? In the, no, 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 in the YouTube Oh. Um, yeah, someone about money. <laughs> oh, well, that was, I was mad that distance. Hey. Uh, sadly for Eric, no, not sadly for me, I like it. I made it. <laughs> 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 yeah, John, 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 <laughs> John. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's funny. Um, anyway, uh, the thing is, it's like, what I like about typology is it, people, there's a lot more general interest in it because it applies to the individual who's watching the video, not just to things in general. So it's true that some people want to learn about philosophy or talk about philosophy and stuff, but people really <laughs> ultimately want to learn about themselves and other people. Yeah. It's the most interesting thing that there is to learn about, even for people who aren't very F.E., I think that's a, a reason why most people know their zodiac sign. It creates a conversation, and you, you know, it's a little bit of an ego thing. <coughs> Everyone saw that, right? Big sneezes. Big sneezes oh, for Lil Eric. Eric. I gotta go draw that. That's a lot of sneezes. It is. Oh, I like some tight. Thanks. God bless you too. God bless <laughs> us everyone. You know, Rachel and I have really been enjoying the little Christmas miracles 
that Christmas Christmas magic has given us this year, including this delicious liquid coke. Hell yeah. Oh, this shit is good. This is some good weed. It really is. It gives me the drug sweats <laughs> just smoking a couple bowls out of it. <laughs> I love hearing you say that. <laughs> Jake Ford's been drawing Christmas cards lately, so I thought oh. I might as well draw fan art of Octavio and TWFP. <gasps> love that. That's a great idea. I'm not sneezing into the microphone, Ray W. The microphone's way over there and way over there. God. Jeez. No promising I won't, though. Right. We can close it to an orgasm in our physical body when we sneeze. I come closest to an orgasm when I'm about to come. Um, Facts. <laughs> what do you want him to do? Not sneeze? Thanks, first laugh. <laughs> no, he needs to get a paper towel and excuse himself and walk away and then sneeze very delicately off to the side mm -hmm. where none of us can see or hear. None. Goodbye, Jake Forrest. You're going to brunch now. Enjoy. Brunch Be careful. Is fun. Watch. Keep your eyes out for the God of Rock. He likes to go to people's brunches and roll their pancakes on his junk. I heard and it. Drink their mimosas. <laughs> it's been in my head. Um, milk thistle supplement. Winston's mom, you are some sort of um, lobbyist for the milk thistle industry, aren't you? Aren't you? Admit it. You're a milk thistle lobbyist. Milk thistle lobbyist is the name of Winston's mom's one act play. <laughs> it's her vagina monologue. That is perfect. Milk thistle lobbyist. Yeah, Winston's mom, what's your Enneagram type? I'd like to know. Mm, this is me likey. It's called sitting Indian style. You do it well. Yeah. So they told me in kindergarten anyway. Can everybody sit Indian style? Yeah. I bet they don't call it that anymore. I bet they think that it's racist now. I do too. Now they probably say sit cross-legged. They do. But you know, what would you say? I'd say, hey, which kind of cross-legged? That's what I'd say. Because you could do it that way. But you could sit like a lady cross-legged. Crisscross applesauce? They call it crisscross applesauce. Hi, Mel Hughes. What do you want to bet? The last time I took one of the six, but I mean average out at five wing four. Yeah, you seem like a five, Winston's mom. Mm -hmm. Native American style. That's funny. Feather not dot, MT. Feather not dot. The random name Ingram has a good breakdown. The others type me at five. Hmm. Don't know about the random name Ingram. It's too many in and 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 in Four figure leg lock style. Indigenous people of North and South America style. <laughs> I like that one. What do I think of Michelle Wilson? I don't know who she is. Oh, you mean the ENFP lady? That lady? She's nice. Oh, Hambone, are you imposing your your neo sitting colonialism on the South American Mayan peoples? I hope not. I hope not. What do I think of Rachel? I think she's swell. She's my fave. Thanks, babe. She's my special someone. This is me, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about her, this Rachel, right? Yeah. She's my... She's my... Um, What's that word? Uh, she's my monolith of majestic glory extending deep beneath the earth 
and high up into the sky. What do you think of Eric? His first last. What do I think of Eric? Well, he's pretty cool. He's all right. He does pretty good for himself, you know. He's got kind of a charmed astrological chart, apparently. Makes a lot of sense in retrospect looking back. <laughs> I mean, I, I never attributed it to that before, but um, yeah, I kind of been a little Teflon, you know. Now they call Reagan the Teflon president because nothing would stick to him. Kind of story of my life. I never really had any explanations to why or anything. You take take whatever you think or don't think about astrology, but um, numerology and astrology both are in full agreement that I'm the bee's knees. I got the I won the magical thinking lottery somehow. Mm -hmm. I think I won the uh, personality type and the Mayan astrology one. Mayan, cool. Yeah. Fortunately, that means they sacrifice you at the end. I've Stop already up. been. You've been, you have already had your, your heart taken out. Cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, had a, I, had, I had a time where um, boring, I felt like I was being sacrificed. Mm. Really? Um, Oh, and Tarot. Tarot loves me, too. Tarot loves you? Yeah. That's good. Yeah. And uh, astrology, it's just the love area was like, boom, I'm going to challenge you with that. Well, Rachel. Yes, Eric. We resolved our, our quandary, our love quandary. Love quandary resolution is a good name for a successful relationship. A love quandary resolution. One. What do I think of the tree behind me? I think Merry, Merry Christmas. What do I think when I think about bees? I think Merry, Merry Christmas. When do you want to have a shot at making Christmas good? If not now, then what other month would it be? It should. I think you both will have a lot to talk about, and he will be able to pull some reluctant family along. What type is a person when their relatives keep complaining that they get too deep with philosophy or political and it takes them three or four hours <laughs> to figure out what they said? Um, INTP. That sounds funny. I would say Nicholas Watson, INTP. It could be INTJ, but more like INTP. Although INTP might be more successful at communicating. It depends what type they're dealing with as well. INTP likes to demonstrate their NI, which means if they're going up against NI polars, you could have a challenging meow by the meow. We can make some peppermint cheese and sing songs by the yeet log. We can make some peppermint cheese and drink a glass of Yule Nog. It's a TWFP Christmas time adventure, yeah. Green and trees and red and lights and ornaments everywhere tonight. A TWFP. Christmas time. <laughs> That's great. Thanks. That's Christmas time for you. When you got a challenging ya yeah, bada meow, then you should hit them with a pia yeah the pia. <laughs> uh, well said, first class. Yeah, well, said. well said. You got a pia on when, when you're feeling too meow, you gotta motivate up a pia occasionally. Got a gumption one up, as they say. Mm -hmm. Con ganas, as the Mexicans say. Con ganas means with pizzazz, with oomph. Con ganas. This is big yawns for little Eric anime. Oh, cool. Show the people. Big yawns for little Eric anime. Yes. <laughs> 
Oh, big yawns for little Eric. What sounds like a racially charged threat? <laughs> going on us. Hello there says that hello there puts the oomph in triumph. <laughs> I put the try in Tri County Fair. There are no little yawns. No, they're not. Anywhere. They're very big yawns. Big yawns. That's why I made them. Whenever he yawns, it reminds me of an anime, a little anime kid doing it because it takes up his whole, like, half of his face. Coach, your reaction to my future reflective story is still playing in my head. I wonder what you're talking about. I want to know. Can you explain what you're talking about? I don't remember. I don't know what you're talking about, but I would like to know. Which Thank function you. and which slot would make you want to correct grammar and word usage? T.I. and the one or two. If you guys were dogs, what kind would fit your personality best? Um, I'd be like a border collie. Rachel would be like a corgi. I had a corgi growing up. Did we you? Had a corgi. Yeah, we did. And I am Welsh. And you I am not Australian. Thank, but you know. thank you, my precious angel. Diabology is dogs. <laughs> T.I. the accuracy police. Mars 3022, coach. Mars 3022. So you suggested something about Mars in 3022. Is that where you're going to live? And what did I say? That it was a great idea. <laughs> Did I make fun of it? <laughs> it's possible. I'm sorry if I teased you. I don't mean to. Yeah, we're bonding over everything, every day, all day, every day. Hey, 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 hey. Collies too. F I every day. I like collies as well. I'll show collies are. TI in the third, as far as accuracy goes, is mostly a passionate desire that things be fair. Provided they're the one who's experiencing the unfairness. So <laughs> it's like, you know, INFJs and ISFJs both, if you're unfair to them, they're going to have a problem with that. They are, INFJs, or at least Rachel, is susceptible to critiques of fairness as well. So if I say you're being unfair, she'll, if she is, she'd be responsible. We don't really have these kind of conversations. We don't. It'll, it'll be in a very drastic where I'm being extremely dramatic is when you say you're being unfair. It's like, that hasn't even happened yet. How could you say that's going to happen when that's even happened yet? It's not fair. And they'll be like, yeah, yeah. Right. You're right. So, but, um, you know, if I'm unfair, I'll definitely hear about it. The, uh, it doesn't happen very often. It's happened like once. But the thing is, um, or twice or something. And I, I admit when I'm being unfair and change accordingly. So <clears throat> that's fine. I think just you admitting that you're being unfair is enough for me because it just shows you understand where I'm coming from with it. Right. Um, the thing is, of course, NI in the dominant slot with TI in the third means TI has got to take a backseat on a lot of stuff that's NI holistically true, but not deconstructively TI true. So in that regard, You've got to you've got to like and I think INFJs are perhaps a type that has has a comp the most complicated reality to come to terms with. Namely, the reality between things that are holistically true and things that are deductively true and which things you should apply TI rigor to and which things you ought not. Especially depending on like the environment that you're in as well as being an INFJ. With FE in the mix as a tool function, <clears throat> it makes for this three-pronged calculus that is a very tight ropey kind of balance 
between the universal truth, the defensible argument, and the socially acceptable or socially most effective approach. Yeah. And those three things don't necessarily align with each other. In contrast, any TI both align really well, and they're constrained by a general frame of FE. That is much more, like, outcome-oriented, right? Yeah. So you can see that INFJ is... It, being an INFJ requires a certain more a certain amount more intuitive deafness than an ENTP who learns through trial and error all the time. Mm, that is very true. You know, we we, we learn to get uh, successfully appear deaf through SI. Um, whoops, that didn't work. Whoops, that didn't work. You know? That is true. <laughs> and eventually we sort of appear deaf because we've kind of gone through all the mistakes we can do. <laughs> Rachel, you want this? You go first. I'll go after you. No, you should take the green hit. Aww. It's at least coffee. Aw, thank you. So considerate. Thanks, darling. That's a maturity in TP2. The comedians like Jim Carrey and Robin Williams that make characters in their comedy indicate any effie. There's no such thing as anybody who's any effie, okay? So Jim Carrey and Robin Williams are both any effie. Yeah, whether they're, and I'm not sure about Jim Carrey, but probably. Uh, Robin Williams certainly was ENFP. The fact right. that they can act well, there's two different ways of acting, you know? The so-called mm -hmm. method acting style, where you really try to believe you're the character and act accordingly, is an FI style of acting. It's not It's not how FE people act. They don't need to do that. They don't need to be the character to act that way. They're imitating things, you know? So there's there's two different kinds of acting styles, and there's nobody who's any FE any more than there's a human being who goes head, legs, then torso. It makes as much sense as saying that. No, I don't write hello there, but thanks for the compliment. You say some good stuff too. Oh, that's a really nice compliment coming from you, Hambone. You don't you don't really hand those out very often, so <laughs> you say some good stuff too. Hello there, you don't make your inferior <laughs> SI into superior SI. It's gonna always be inferior. You're always gonna feel a little bit aw shucks about it. It's your area of good self-deprecating humor. Okay. If you got your fourth slot SI. You got to be like, that's what you make jokes about yourself. Well, they developed that heads like torso person in China. Good to know, MT. I'll keep, I thank you for updating me about current events. That's always important. Reading as usual. Fantastic. I love you, darling. I love you too. I was explaining to Rachel earlier, we had another interesting conversation. I was explaining to her, I love her with my emotions. And she point out there's a distinction between that and what a lot of people would normally say, which is, I love you because of my emotions, as though the love or the emotion itself that caused you to express the words that represent the feeling. Whereas for me, it's more like, I'm loving you so much that I'm even engaging my emotions in this, you see? Yeah. And Hambone, you're, you're good. Right. Fine. Well, see, that's the problem for the ENFP. There's no FE payoff for you. So, indeed, what now? For me, that's the end of the that's the end of the <laughs> equation. I'll, and there you go. <laughs> Aha! I've won. I get points. You don't get any points for that. You got to actually do <laughs> shit to be effective or solve problems or something. Yeah. Oh my gosh, Steve Day! Welcome, welcome to the INFJ Club. Hey. Steve Day's been an INFJ for a week. Welcome. What were you before that? Yeah. INFP, then ENFP, then ESTV for that. Christian Bale is an ISP and is a method actor, and he has FE. Well, he's got fourth slot FE. He is an interesting person. I think one of the most, um, I don't know, vivid pictures of him in my mind is him at Heath Ledger's funeral. He, like, 
couldn't he was all the way in the back and he stayed to like basically everyone was left like that just those pictures like really resonated with me like you could without saying anything doing anything or emoting anything i got such a huge feel from that picture like you could tell he was really mourning okay i, I want to say in response to mel hughes i think that's an interesting point but i think the reality is more like entps typically overestimate their effie um but i i can't fake people very well except when i'm doing like humorous characters and stuff i can do that kind of <laughs> shit well you know i can't other than that i can't really uh i'm not very good at deceiving or faking i have to win with with shit that's i i t like to win with shit that's out in the open it's objective true you do so, um, I mean, what do you think about the idea that uh, HPs underestimate their FI if they actually come across as really authentic? I think ENTPs underestimate their FI if they actually come as. I agree with you, um, but I think that's for people who actually know ENTPs. Um, I've been lucky enough to to know a couple. And uh, you don't get it right away. But when but the best way to see FI is with an ENTP is bring them around an animal. And uh, you'll see it. That's, that's the first true. time I noticed it. That's true. Um it's amazing. I love, I love my kitty. Yeah. And so genuinely, it's just like, it's beautiful. Thanks, darling. You're welcome. I was like, you literally think out loud. What you see is what you get with such a good fire effect. I'm like, well, thanks, Winston Small. Yeah, he does. You're right. I do like to think that I what you see is what you get. Mm -hmm. um, I would hope so for me anyway. Because yeah, you do. I, I have to be that way because it has to do with the fourth slot SI. I being deceptive or manipulative or you know trying to you know what's the word posture being posturing mm -hmm. in some regard it takes too much work and i want to talk too often to to maintain anything like that so icp i can see them as well icps love training pets like I knew, like I knew an ISTP who loved his dog, and the bond that he had when he was like training the dog was pretty emotional. It was adorable. No, TE people don't think out loud. TI people think out loud. Hmm. TE people, like my, my dad, he he ideates about schedules a bit out loud when other people are involved in them. So like he wanted to talk out today with Delilah and, and me going to Palm Desert this week. And it's basically the point of the communication was, do you guys want to go to Palm Desert? We have the thing for the week. We could all go down there and do Christmas down there. Delilah was resistant. She didn't want to commit to it, uh, spending the nights down there. She agreed that she could drive down there and come back same day. Uh, that seemed like something I didn't want to hassle around with. And then, then I talked to my dad later, and I decided, I said, like, no, I don't think we're going to go since not everyone's going to go. My dad said, well, I'm going to go. Okay, so in that regard, they're, they're talking out the the logistics and the process of what they're going to decide to do. That's true. To eat people do that as is necessary. But um, – T I N E thinks out loud if it's any first. Any thinks out loud because it's ideational, it's external ideation. S E, not so much. It's not T I that's thinking out loud, it's any, I guess, is the bottom line. My dad thinks out loud when he's rambling on about shit, you know, mostly. Any SI stuff, right? Like he's he's remembering facts that he can share with us about whatever. Yeah, but um, 
tell them about that movie that's coming out. Oh, right. So well, I, I, I really want to interview. Yeah, I got to interview yeah, my dad. Uh, maybe, in fact, maybe we will tonight. Who knows? But I want to yeah. show you the Eric Gilder people video, too. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Please, please. Um, so I... My dad, this movie called, I mean, I called Ford versus Ferrari. It's about the 1966 Le Mans race. Now, interestingly, 1966 Le Mans is the race that my dad was in the pit of the Ford team. He and my mom went there. My mom has this compact that's like, it's got a mirror. It's got, I don't know, that, that uh, rouge or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and it says Le Mans on 1966. My dad showed it to me. And I've long known that he was into racing when he was in Europe. He raced many Coopers and himself and was he got into the pit with the Ford team. He was somebody who held up signs saying uh, timer. Somebody who said, like, you know, this is what how many time what your time is on this lap. Um and he was down there in the pit, you know, and stuff like that. So anyway, uh cool. he's got lots of stories from that experience and I want to interview him about it because it, it's the exact year and uh, situation that uh, so only said Henry my dad has always been doing this trip arrangement shit it was just usually for him and my mom it's it's how he expresses his any third slot it's what he gets satisfaction from is traveling trying planning trips that's that's physical extroverted intuition it is not new to right now. It just right now he's got these additional people to include in his trip planning yeah. that he didn't have prior because he had my mom. And as my mom is transitioning from a meaningful member of the family to not, then he's got me and Rachel and Delilah. So that's what we got. She's um, still meaningful. She's meaningful to me. Well, uh, yeah, you know, he, my dad yes. actually had the conversation with me today that basically that mom's basically not company for him at all anymore, that he can't have any kind of conversation with her, mm -hmm. that, you know, how did giraffes make me an ENFP? Beats the shit out of me. <laughs> I think I knew an ENFP who liked giraffes. I think there's a video of mine saying giraffes <laughs> make me into an ENFP. Oh, oh shit! I think there is. Yes, I remember. I have no you idea. Like, you don't have that video. many um, videos on ENFPs, but they are helpful. And for some reason, the giraffe thing was just funny. Hey there, Delilah. What's it like in New York City? Yes, my father just got back from a trip to see his buddy Richard, and they traveled. They met in Vegas. Fun. He had a good time. Oh, good. He communicates by email with various other old buddies and uh, sometimes talks on the phone, but he can't really hear anymore very well. So, uh, yeah. Aww. I got to smoke a cigarette. Talking about my parents always makes me have a little bit of FI, which is confusing kind of FI because it's, yeah, Richard is a dad friend name. <laughs> Richard. <laughs> it is a dad friend name. Richard and Ellen. That's what it is. <laughs> you know, I'm going to go see Richard and Ellen. Oh, that is so, <laughs> so American. <laughs> I believe that's the case. Dale. Dale is my godfather's name. Oh, there you go. <laughs> there, yeah, your mom mentioned his name once. I, I learned that Dale and my dad had a falling out when my dad got into an argument with Dale's wife about claims that she made in her book. Oh, my God. I don't even know. He said. basically disagreed with some shit she said in her book. Oh, yeah. You remember? You were yes, there. Yes, yes. I do remember that. <laughs> Rachel. Ow. Was I not Was I not chilled? I didn't mean to be sorry. What, what, what happened? I don't know. What did somebody say? Rachel. Ow. It says hello there. You never think out loud? 
Sometimes it can be good to uh, think out loud. I do it. When did I get into cognitive functions? Um, literally, like, only listening to Eric's stuff. So I'd say within the last year. Still learning. Um, I knew about the personality types before I knew about the functions. And I knew about the personality types for about nine years now. Thank you, Melchies. Michael, Bill, Steve, Dan. Michael is a popular name. I'm such an idiot. I'm so sorry, Coach. Tell him, Rachel. Did he hear that? He's so he's so sorry, Coach. What's he sorry for this time? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> don't let the hear you're always being sorry about shit that I have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. I don't think I know how to think out loud. I just be usually repeating what I'm already thinking. I knew this INTJ who um um who, when he was really stressed out, would think to himself, uh, talk to himself. But, uh, and I guess that was fairly often. But uh, the stress would bring out uh, his inner monologue. Very fascinating to watch <laughs> as an observer of people. How is self development? correlate with my type of being an ENFP, please help. I can see your self-development. I mean, oops, what did I just do? Oh. Um, In my opinion, about ENFP. Yeah, I think you're better. Real self-development is easier for an ENFP than for an INFP. For I sure. would 100% agree with that. Because for ENFP, FI is a tool function, NA is the dominant function, they're a metaphysical type, they get ideas. They ideally would like to manifest in terms of ideas. That frog is looking at the tree. Yes. He's enjoying the Christmas. He's enjoying Aww. the Christmas tree. This has been such a nice Christmas season for me. I have to say it's been just great. So, um, peanut the westward harm prevention elephant. Peanut the westward harm prevention elephant is here, he's, preventing harm in a westerly direction. He is. He's yeah. He is. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't know that was his name. He needs there. I like it. Did though. you just name him that? Hambone. Peanut the westward harm prevention <laughs> elephant. <laughs> That's pot frog. Pot frog is mostly a pot. Oh, yeah. A pot, like, well. Kind of like grind up against it and you can get the little. Right now it's filled with joints and bits of weed and old joints. He's a handy frog. I like him. Pot frog. That's the, do we, that's the picture of, uh, where is it? How do I point this here? Here. Oh, that's weird. That's Eric. Right there. Right here and right there. Yeah. Whoa. It's like you're traveling in time. No, just so you know, you guys are traveling back in time. Mm -hmm. That him and that him. And that him. That him. That him. <laughs> Look at that adorable little guy. So cute. So cute. So adorable. And then there's like a little mouse. Where? There. Blah. There. And I put that up there because... I'm a mouse in Chinese astrology. Nice. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's. Thanks, she's running Jay off for player of the month. Age. Who's who's the? Uh, oh, Hambone. Hambone wins the Knights Who Say N E trophy. Hmm. Oh well. All right. Well, we're gonna call it a live stream. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to eat.
plenty of cheese.